Hi, my name's Al Mooney and I'm the product manager for Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm really excited today to be able to give you an introduction of our latest and greatest version of the software, Premiere Pro CS6. As you probably know, uh, back in early 2010, we released CS5, and the big news there was the Mercury playback engine, a brand new way of handling the playback of complex, effects-rich timelines, and uh, on any system, giving you much more power than you had before. With 5.5, we added new editing features, but with CS6, we're really focusing on two key areas. We have the engine with Mercury, so what we wanted to do with CS6 was focus on the user interface and the experience of editing. So we've thought a great deal about the UI, how it looks, with a real focus on the media, removing interruptions, removing noise, removing Chrome, and just giving you direct access to being creative. And the second thing is editing, the rhythm of editing. What does it feel like to sit down in front of Premiere Pro and cut for 14 hours a day? We're increasingly seeing professional, fast, keyboard-driven editors switching to this platform, and we've taken that as a real focus this time around and made sure that they can edit comfortably and, and stay in that creative zone. So let's have a look at the user interface first of all. As soon as you launch Premiere Pro CS6, you'll see this. This is the completely redesigned default workspace. We call this the two-up workspace, and straight away you can see that you're much more engaged with your media. So we're using the whole width of the screen for the source and the program monitor, and we've removed huge amounts of chrome and clutter and noise. So just a few examples of that. If you look at the source, program, and the timeline panels, every one of those has a time ruler. Historically, we would draw time code values at regular positions across the time code ruler, and that meant that it was quite common for you to see 30 or 40 white drawn time code values on the screen. Now, if you need those time code values and you find them useful, of course, you can switch them back on just by going up to the flyout menu and choosing to show the time ruler numbers. But what we found is that most editors don't need to be seeing this all the time, and as a result, showing them just is kind of distracting and takes you away from your attention being squarely on the media. Let's now go in and look at some really specific examples of the user interface and what we've done to make working smoother, more intuitive, and with less interruption. So I'd like to start by talking about the project panel. This has been completely redesigned, and again, as soon as you look at it, you can see that it's all about the media and much less chrome and clutter and noise. So firstly, this is the new icon view. Great, big, gorgeous 16 by 9 thumbnails, but it's not just making it look big and pretty. There's lots of functional stuff in the project panel that's really going to speed up and aid the creative process. For example, we've introduced Hover Scrub. So I can very easily just move my mouse over a frame to get a very quick idea of what the media is I'm working with. We're using as much screen real estate as you give us with the project panel. So a really nice feature of this is I can go full screen, and using my zoom slider at the bottom, I can zoom right in and get big, gorgeous thumbnails, again, with minimal clutter and chrome, really feeling engaged with the media I'm working with. Hover Scrub, of course, works in this big mode as well. But the next thing is a kind of way of speeding up the initial rough cut or the initial process of editing. Hover Scrub's very useful, but what we've added to the project panel is that you can now single click on a clip, and this gives you this mini playhead at the bottom of the clip. I can, of course, pick this playhead up and drag it around. As you'd expect from a professional keyboard-driven editing application, I can also use my JKL keys to move left and right. But one of the most useful things about the new project panel design is that I can actually use my I and my O keys inside my project panel to select a range of the clip. This means I can very quickly go ahead and mark up multiple clips and then shift select them and send them directly to a sequence. Now if I tried to do that in 5.5, what I would need to do is of course double click each clip to load it into the source monitor, mark my range and splice into the sequence. You can still do that, but being able to mark those ranges directly inside the project panel just speeds up that initial creative process. Now, one of the things we've heard from our customers a great deal is, you know, I'm working with more media than ever before with tighter deadlines than ever before. So anything we can do to speed up the process and, and reduce the amount of time taken is useful. One of the big things is it's really useful if I can see whether or not I've used a clip. You know, in this day and age of tapeless media, we're working with hundreds, thousands of files in, in a project, and a quick visual indication of whether or not something's been used is very, very helpful. So again, looking at the project panel, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of these clips, we have these little orange icons. These would be gray if the media was not used. So immediately, by seeing that the audio and video icons are orange, I know that clip is being used somewhere. Even more useful than that, though, is I can just single click on those icons to be taken to or to be shown how many sequences the clip is used in, 
and which sequence. And just single clicking on those sequences will take me to that clip in that sequence. So a very easy way of seeing whether or not I've used something and where. You'll notice in the new default workspace that we've docked the media browser in the same panel as the project. And that's in order to you know, give us the ability to really focus in on those source and program monitors and have big, gorgeous video. Um, but you know, one of the questions you might be asking yourself is, well, how do I import something from the media browser? One of the really nice, small, but, but very useful features we've added with CS6 is the ability to, to go to the media browser. And you'll notice we have hover scrubbing in the media browser as well. And you know, we can zoom in and make these thumbnails nice and big, just like in the project panel. But if I want to import this clip into my project, what I can do is just pick it up and drag it over to the tab header of that panel, and then just drop it straight in. So very easy way of moving between panels and making that whole importing media process very straightforward. The media browser is, of course, the, uh, the thing we use to navigate through our tapeless media formats. It understands tapeless media directories. And of course, one of the most important things to remember about Premiere Pro is our extremely broad native media support. No transcode, no rewrap, pretty much everything you can just import and play back. We're continuing that with CS6 with new support for the ARRI RAW codec and new support for Red Epic 5K footage. All right, so let's have a look at some other areas of the user interface and what we've done to really streamline uh, the creative process. Let me draw your attention to the source and program monitors. I've already talked about the fact that they're big and that therefore you see more video, but you might notice we've really tidied these monitors up and reduced great swathes of gray and chrome such that the media is the key focus. So a few examples of that include this new zoom scroll bar. We've combined the zoom and the scroll. It takes up a lot less screen real estate, leaving a lot more space for the video itself. You'll also notice the buttons are now much smaller and much clearer. But what we find is, like I said earlier, people using Premiere Pro are fast, keyboard-driven editors. These are the guys who are unlikely to move the mouse over to a button and click on it to achieve something. If you want to be engaged with your media, you might not want to see all these buttons at all. So one of the nice things about the UI in Premiere Pro CS6 is that it's extremely customizable. So you can see I can actually just turn those transport controls completely off, giving me even more space for my video. But like I say, it's all about being customizable. So a great feature of the monitors, the, both the source and program monitors in 6, is this little plus button in the bottom right-hand corner. That is what we call the button editor. This allows me as an editor to fully customize my button row with all the things I need and none of the things I don't. So for example, let's say I don't want my still image export frame button on my button row. I'm going to pick it up and just throw it away. But let's say I do want my save margins, pick them up, add them to the button row. If I wanted loads of controls on screen, I can have two rows of buttons. And you can see that kind of just leaves an empty row at the bottom. But being able to fully customize my button rows um, is a very useful feature and, and really helps me to sort of customize the user interface so I can work as I want to. We've also ensured that in the monitors, we present the most important things more clearly than ever before. So a great example of that is the Mercury uh, fractional resolution control, which in previous versions of Premiere Pro was a little harder to find. It was under a right click, and I had to rummage around in this big menu. And now, just like in After Effects and other Adobe applications, that playback resolution control is right there in front of my video, so it's really obvious where I need to go if I need to change that. Another really big feature and a much requested feature with, with Premiere Pro was full screen mode. Now, historically, we used to call this full screen. That's not really full screen, as you can see, because I've still got Chrome and I've still got buttons. So now, with CS6, simply holding the Control key and using the tilde button allows you to have what we would call cinema mode, so full screen playback right there on your primary monitor. And that was a much requested feature. So let's have a look at some more elements of the UI. You may have noticed while I was playing back these big, gorgeous audio meters in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, now taking up all the space you can give them. And a really nice feature of these is that they're fully resizable. So they'll go as big or as small as you want them, horizontal or vertical. And you can really just determine exactly how you want that layout to look. These audio meters come from Audition, so we share a lot of technology inside Adobe. Um, and so the ballistics of these meters is far better than ever before, um, and they're more accurate, and just take up, you know, all of the screen estate you can give them. You may have noticed that I just did this. This is another really important feature in CS6, which I will talk about in more detail later on, a feature that we just call Don't Stop Playback. One of the frustrations in previous versions of Premiere Pro was that playback stopped regularly if you resized a panel, if you jumped out to Windows Explorer or the Finder and back. If you did a lot of things, we'd stop the transport. And like I keep saying, this is about the rhythm of editing, about keeping you in the creative zone. So if playback keeps stopping, that's kind of annoying. 
Um, so don't stop playback basically means you can do pretty much anything you can think of in the interface and playback will not stop unless you specifically tell it to, of course. The audio mixer has also been redesigned and this looks a lot more like um, the audition mixer. Notice how these fader strips scale to fit the panel. We've added really nice features in here as well. Simple things like if I pull this fader down and want to return it to 0 dB, I can do that just with a quick double click. The buttons, the panners are much clearer. The layout of the channel strip is much, is much clearer too. And so, you know, audio working in the mixer um, is that bit more intuitive uh, than it was before. So that gives you an overview of what we've done with the user interface. And hopefully you can see what I mean when I say it's really focusing on the media, on the being creative with the removal of interference, noise, and chrome.